Hi, this is Mrs. Bustamante. Today I want to talk about non-Mendelian genetics or genetics that really don't follow this idea of complete dominance. That one trait is completely covered up or one allele is completely covered up by another one. Because it doesn't always work exactly like Mendel thought. And there's the first one I want to talk about is this idea of incomplete dominance, where one allele cannot totally mask the other, and what we get from that is an intermediate or kind of in between. And I think one of the nicest ways to look at this is to think about flowers, right? So in some instances, instead of just having um, one flower color dominant over the other flower color, we'll see sort of an in-between made when you have a heterozygous mix. So let's look at this parental generation and I put up um, just a pun and square here to give us an idea of what we're thinking about. Let's say we crossed RR, which gave us a white flower, little r, little r, and capital R, capital R, which had red flowers. Well, all the offspring, right, on my pun and square would be heterozygous. They would all have bitter, big R, little r, uh, no matter how many we had, just based on the genetics of the P generation, right? Well, if big R was completely dominant over little r, these flowers would have been red. But they're not red. They're actually pink. They're kind of in between the two colors, right? So we call this incomplete dominance. When you see them kind of mixed together is how I like to think of incomplete dominance. It's kind of like a, um, a mixture of the two. And that's what we'd see from our heterozygous genotype here. Now, if you still had little r, little r in say an F2 generation um, later on, or if you had big R, big R, remember you would still see the same phenotype of red and white. So instead of just having two phenotypes, we actually get um, three phenotypes from the three possible genotypes we could see with incomplete dominance. And I like to think of it as sort of a, a mixture, if you will. Another type of non-Mendelian genetics is this idea of co-dominance. It's where two alleles actually affect the phenotype. Um, and those two alleles are separate and you can kind of distinguish or you can see them both. Basically what we're saying is you can see both alleles in, in the phenotype. Uh, this happens sometimes in cows and horses and even chickens and a lot of times we call them roan, um, particularly in cows and horses and it's where we get these kind of like spotting patterns in them because we see two alleles expressed. So let's look at an example here. Uh, we're going to use cows if we have homozygous dominant, we would say, or big R, big R. I really shouldn't use dominance and recessive here. And let's say we cross it with a pure white, uh, which would give you a WW. You could get a possibility of a roan cow, right, of having what we would call RW. And it would give you this kind of um, phenotype that showed some parts of the white and some parts of the red. So because we see parts of both simultaneously, we say it is co-dominance. One doesn't cover up the other, but it's also not a mixing. We see both of them independently. So let's say we want to cross a red cow with a roan bull just to see what happens. Our first step, right, is to figure out our genotypes. So we know what to cross, and the only way to get a red cow would be big R, big R. The only way to get a roan bull would be big R, W. So that's going to be our parental cross. Again, just like all our other problems, we fill our Punnett square. Two genotypes on the left here, or one genotype on the left, divided by which gamete could be given uh, to the offspring, and then the other one on top. Then I fill my Punnett squares by bringing these letters down, right, or across like we've been practicing. And I fill each of these squares with the possible genotype that the offspring could get. Uh, now, of course, my job is to interpret this data. And remember, this is just the possibilities of what... Um, this calf could be, and every time they would have another calf, you would have this possibility happen again. So let's think about it. Okay, our genotypes. I only have two genotypes possible here, RR or RW, which means that I have a 2 in 4 chance or a 50% chance of having, getting RR, which would be a red calf. Or I have a 2 in 4 chance or a 50% chance of getting a roan calf, which would be RW. 
And that's my idea of codominance.